Hi, my name is Andrea Kane, and I will be the instructor for this section of medical terminology for summer 2020. What I'd like to do with this video is I'd like to go through our syllabus together so that um, we're both on the same page and we both have the same understanding of the material. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. The best way to reach out to me is through email. So let's go through it. Um, where you should be is this is, should be HSC 114. Um, you should be in either section 93101 or section 75102. This is for summer 2020. It's an online only class, which means we won't probably see each other in person, unfortunately. Um, we might be able to Zoom um, throughout the summer and interact that way and see each other, but it's not going to be a sit down face to face kind of class or anything that you would have to come to campus for. Everything will be online. We start on June 15th, 2020, and we finish on August 13th of 2020. And this is a three credit hour class, which means you're gonna be busy, very busy, because essentially we're taking a 16 week class and compressing it into eight weeks. So hang on to your hats. It's going to be busy, it's gonna be fast. We're gonna have a lot of material to get through, both you and I, and we can do it. This is gonna be good. There will be a final, and there's actually a final exam as well as a final project, and I'll talk about those later in the syllabus, but just know that you will be able to see the course calendar in the syllabus um, further down and or Brightspace. Both places have plenty of information about your finals. Um, it gives you my instructor information. This is my office number for the Calmer campus. The voicemails there are forwarded to me electronically as emails, so if you happen to leave a message, it's the same as sending me an email, although I think I'd prefer emails if you don't mind. And that leads to the next one. There's my email address um, through NICC. Um, please use that as the best way to reach me. I am working out of my home, but I will be moving over the summer, and so um, I'll be letting you know when that happens and what days I'll be offline. Um, trying to get that taken care of. So email really is the best way. I can I can look at your emails um, using my, my iPhone and I can also do it via computer. So again, it's a great way for us to communicate. I did put my office location on here even though um, right now the campus is still closed. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get back to my office, but someday it is there. Um, so as a result, ours on Calmer's campus are to be determined to be announced. Um, we'll have to see what happens with that. I will have Zoom office hours though from Mondays 1 to 5 in the afternoons, Thursdays from 6 to 9 in the evenings. Any other days or times that you'd like, reach out to me and we'll set up an appointment and we'll Zoom. I'm on the computer quite a bit, off and on different times of the day and evening and even on weekends. So um, usually I can accommodate it when a student reaches out to me and says, hey, can we Zoom? Again, the best way to contact me is through NICC email. Um, whoops, I'm sorry, I went a little bit too fast there, through there. Important note about the syllabus, make sure that you check Brightspace um, for any corrections or updates. Um, I will make sure that I keep you informed as to what is going on and I will respond to your emails as quickly as I can. Um, sometimes I have to reach out for some additional information so that may delay it, but I will let you know what's happening. So let's talk about the course itself, the course description. We are studying medical terminology. It is the language of medicine. We are really emphasizing in this course word analysis, construction of definitions, pronunciation, and spelling of medical terms. We're not getting into a whole lot of anatomy and physiology because hopefully you, you have either already had that or you're going to have that um, pathophysiology and, and the study of the diseases and things and procedures that will come in other classes. We will touch on some of those because we have to in order for us to understand the medical terms, but it won't be the same um, as if you're in an anatomy and physiology class. So just understand if you're expecting me to uh, talk about and name all the bones and all the muscles and all the nerves, um, that's really not what we're going to be doing, but we're going to learn about the words that make up the descriptions of those and how healthcare professionals um, communicate with each other. 
So our common learning outcome that we're going to be assessing is critical thinking. That is really what, what this course is about, is teaching you critical thinking and having you demonstrate critical thinking. You will, again, gain that understanding of medical language with emphasis on word analysis, construction of definitions, pronunciation, and spelling. We have seven educational learning outcomes. So by the end of the course, which is eight weeks long, um, we are going to identify and define various parts of the medical word, analyze and define medical terms, correctly spell and pronounce medical terms, identify and define common medical abbreviations, understand the basic anatomy and physiology of the human body, list and briefly explain important lab tests, clinical procedures, and abbreviations that pertain to different body systems, and interpret medical terms in their proper contexts, such as medical reports and records. That's really, every week, those are our learning objectives. Those are what we're trying to come out of as a whole through this whole class. So just keep those in mind. That's really where we're going. That's really what everything is in this course is created to do. Now I'm not going to go through the unit objectives um, here in this video because we'll be covering those each week as we go through those units. So I'm going to save those for the chapter videos that I do and you can uh, take a look at those here, but also know that I'll be covering those um, in the videos about each chapter. So I'm going to scroll down here, keep going, and then keep going. We have lots of units, lots and lots and lots, 16 units to be exact. So let's talk about required materials. The only thing that I require for this course is the book, The Language of Medicine by Davy Ellen Chabner, 12th edition, published by a self a sevier. Sorry about that. Um, that is all that is required. You can rent the book, you can have the book online, you can buy the book. My personal recommendation is that you buy the book so that you can really write in it and get the most out of it. Um, I realize that it is on the edge of expensive but it's one of those books that um, I think you'll get the value out of if you purchase it. But you're not required to purchase it as long as you have it to be able to access it. Um, and you will also be given an electronic link to go to the website and be able to um, take advantage of addi additional materials created by the company and the author to go along with this. So, um, and that's, that code is in the front of your book, or if you rent a book, or if you um, do an electronic book, you'll also get that access. And there'll be something in our um, course guide about that. So, uh, not, I'm sorry, not the course guide, but the, um, that page that has um, course materials in Brightspace, where you'll go to see that. Methods of delivery online. We are online. <laughs> so everything's electronic. Um, grading procedures and scales. You can read through this on your own. The one thing I would like to emphasize is that if something seems off to you, please contact me immediately. Um, I, I put in the information and some information it, um, is through Brightspace itself. If anything seems off to you, if it doesn't seem like that's what you saw or what it should be reflected, reach out to me. Um, sometimes bright space is not perfect. So um, let me know and we'll, uh, I'll investigate it and we'll see what we can do. Most of my items are graded based on rubrics and that increases fairness and equality. So this gives you the scale of the number of points that you would need to have um, for each letter grade, and I'm going to let you review all of those. Um, we have 10 discussions, 18 assignments, 14 quizzes, one project, and that's a total of 48 possible items that you're going to complete in eight weeks. You have one extra credit opportunity as well. The points fall out. You can see 17% is discussions, 35% is assignments, 34% is quizzes, 14% is that one project. It's a group project, and that equals our 100%. But you also have a chance um, to regain some um, of your points and percentages up to 5% with an extra credit opportunity. 
Um, this class has been designed and is taught by multiple NICC instructors. So I am just one of many who teaches medical terminology. Each instructor and section is a little bit different. However, we all use the intro and end of class discussions, all the weekly assignments that are um, listed under quizzes in Brightspace, the weekly quizzes themselves, the comprehensive review, and the final exam. So we are consistent in that. Where, where you may see some differences are some projects along the way or some discussions, um, content of those and those types of things. Um, Brightspace will automatically grade your weekly assignments and quizzes as soon as they are completed. Um, if you have, again, a concern about Brightspace's interpretation of an answer, please contact me. Um, a lot of times I will manually recheck the items and make sure all students are given appropriate credit for their answers if um, that's an issue. Um, you can see how we assess your learning. I'm not going to cover that. It just goes on down through there. One thing I will emphasize is make sure that you don't use a wireless connection when you're taking one of your final, one of your weekly quizzes, particularly, because if you get an interruption in the connection, that will disrupt your test, and um, that you only have one attempt with your tests, and and that. Um, could be an issue. So just make sure that you have a really good steady connection um, when you're getting ready to take your weekly quizzes on your final exam. Um, any indication of cheating on an exam test or quiz results in an automatic zero. If you have any questions on the materials, please reach out to me at least 24 hours before the quiz close, closes. Um, quizzes close at 3 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. Um, so please reach out to me Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, um, so that we can get you an answer before the quiz closes. Course calendar will, will be down a little bit further and we'll walk through that. Uh, we really do want your feedback. Make sure that every opportunity you have for feedback, you give it because it helps us improve the course, it helps us improve the content, it helps us improve um, your learning and what you come out of it with, um, makes it better and easier for future students. And we want to know, uh, how is Brightspace working for you? Um, are you getting what you need? So please make sure every opportunity that you have for feedback, please take an opportunity to do that. And as always, we assess to make sure that you really are learning. This is your time. This is your money. This is your opportunity. And we want to make sure that we're providing you with material that is very relevant, very accurate, and information that will help you in your future. And we want to know that you've mastered it. So we will be assessing you throughout the, the course. Um, some policies. I have to take attendance every week. Um, my minimal expectations for attendance is submitting homework, being engaged in the online discussions, completing quizzes, um, assessments, those kinds of things. So if I can see that you're busy in Brightspace, then I know that you're engaged and I can mark you as being present. If you are going to take some time off, um, more than three days off in a week, please just shoot me an email and say, hey, I'm going to be offline for several days. That way, I know not to mark you absent. I know that you're still engaged. You're still in the course. If for some reason you decide that you get into this and you really don't want to complete the course, you want to withdraw, please reach out um, to your academic advisor immediately and start having those conversations um, because I do have to mark whether or not you're... you're um, actively engaged. The next topic is one I hope we will never have to discuss. Um, it is called academic dishonesty and there's a lot of information under this heading and I would ask that you review it very carefully. Um, please don't go here. Please respect yourself and me enough that you are academically honest and show integrity because when you don't, you, you, you undermine your own self in terms of professionalism, reputation, conscience, and integrity. It follows you. Maybe it haunts your conscience, maybe it doesn't, but it will follow you. So choose to be honorable. Do the right thing. Regardless of internal, external pressures, do the right thing. Be honest. 
if you don't learn this information now, you're going to have to scramble to learn it in the future, and that's not going to help you at that point. Not to mention um, how that how that really follows you in life. So please do not cheat. It goes through all of what is cheating and all of that. I just ask you to read it and make sure that you understand if you have questions, um, you are welcome to answer, ask me and I will answer those. I have a note in here that it's not considered cheating if you share notes from classroom activities, discussions, video recordings, as long as it's appropriately cited as a resource um, and used to develop your own ideas and complete your own work. So um, there are some things that, that you can do that are not cheating. Um, and we definitely want you to help each other and encourage each other, but um, we want to do it honestly. Late work. Oh, goodness. Because this is an eight-week course, you are not going to want to do this. You don't want to fall behind. You've got to stay current. Um, everything needs to be completed and submitted as it's scheduled on the course calendar and in Brightspace. Um, I collect them um, in Brightspace and score them within a week of you submitting them. So you're going to want to double check your due dates and you're going to want to make sure that you're staying on top of things. There are che weekly checklists to help you say, oh, I checked that off. Oh, I checked that off. That's done. No, I still need to do something else. Um, if, you're, if you have work or quizzes that are not attempted, not submitted before the specified due date, it will be a zero and discussions cannot be accepted late. Just the nature of discussions makes it impossible to keep up with the grading when those go late. Um, I don't do makeup tests. Your due dates for assignments and quizzes may be extended if there are extenuating circumstances. As soon as you know you have an extenuating circumstance, please reach out to me so that I can um, update Brightspace for you. But just understand, this is only an eight-week course, um, and we cover just an incredible amount of material in that short period of time. If you fall behind, it puts you that much further to try and catch up and then stay with us. So be very, very careful to try and, and, and stay current. Um, there's a section in here about assignments and extra credit. I'll leave you to read that. Use of technology in the classroom. Again, all of this I'll leave you, leave you to read. Um, you can go through it if you have questions, let me know. Um, classroom conduct, again, behavior. Um, expect that we will be respectful with each other, um, especially when we're doing discussions. Um, we want to be polite. We want to use appropriate tone of voice. Um, we want to use um, open-mindedness. Um, to listen to what each other is saying and consider it. We may not agree with it, and that's okay, but if we listen respectfully and we acknowledge that the other person has the right to their own views and beliefs and we thank them for sharing those, that is a respectful and appropriate way to approach things. Um, so there is some additional information down here about the Learning Center, about the Read, Speaker, Listen button, copyrights, netique, or netiquette, um, I guess is how you would say it. The accommodations policy. If you have or need an accommodation, please let me know so that I can work with you and Disability Services to make your academic experience the very best possible. Um, want to make sure that you have your needs met and that you're able to be successful. And of course, there's no discrimination whatsoever. That is not tolerated. So the course calendar, let's talk about that. Typically, your due dates are on Mondays following the week of class. Um, deadlines are clearly indicated in Brightspace. They are also, um, so that that's really where you're going to go is, is Brightspace to look for your deadlines. But you can always reach out to me if you have questions. Um, because sometimes things may change. I don't expect any changes at this point. I think we're going to have a straight eight weeks and it's going to go according to plan, but um, you never know what's going to happen. And if something does, we'll be sure and communicate to each other, either through email, through announcements, 
um, and definitely updating Brightspace. If you're unsure when something's due, check Brightspace first because that's really where I'm going to have the deadlines posted. And if you're still not sure then, then make sure you ask. Um, we're planning to open on June 10th Brightspace to you um, so that you can get a jump ahead and be prepared. So the things that open up on June 10th are discussions, video reviews, and assignments. Um, discussions that are that will be open up you can complete these in advance if you choose to do so but don't forget you need to be able to reply to at least five of your classmates posts every week so if you go ahead and you do all your discussions early just remember you've got to go back and look at at least five of your classmates and post on theirs as well these will close Monday nights at 11 30 p.m. The only exception is the 4th of July week when it will close on Tuesday at 11.30 p.m. There are rubrics for most of the discussions, so make sure you look at those um, so that you know how I'll be grading those in terms of content. Video reviews. Um, there are two important ones, and that is um, this one with a syllabus and going through it, and I'm sorry it takes so long, but there's so much material to cover and I wanna make sure we're on the same page. The second one is about studying for this class. How can you be successful? Why do you need to study? Those types of things. Those are the two videos that I've asked for you to complete and in Brightspace. You will not have a grade on them, but it's mandatory completion so that I know that we're together as we set out on this journey. There are optional weekly lecture videos um, that I will be posting as we move along, one for each chapter. Um, I'll try and keep those short and helpful, and they'll just be there for you um, to supplement your education. Assignments. Those can be started and completed at any time throughout the course, but they do have specific due dates, and there are rubrics for all the assignments assignments except the extra credit opportunity. So you're going to want to look at those rubrics before you work on each assignment so you know the grading criteria. Make sure that you're familiar with that and that you've checked that. So week two there will be a radiology assignment, um, week five a medical terminology assignment, week eight is your final group project and that's where you're going to work together. You get to pick your teams um, and you're going to create this project. And I'm not going to give it away because I think you're going to have a great time with it. Um, but the information will be in Brightspace and you can access it and be working on it and that type of thing. And I'll give some more information as we go along. I'm working with the instructional designers to set up so that you can have an online forum for each group so that once you've decided on your group, say by week three, we can set up those um, message boards where you can interact with just your teammates on your final group project. And then there is the extra credit opportunity on Appendices 2 and 3 in your book. What will open weekly are your weekly assignments. Those weekly assignments are under quizzes, not under assignments, but under quizzes. That was not my choice, but that is the way that it was built. So I um, want you to know um, if you go to assignments and you're wondering why there's no weekly ones there, they're all under quizzes. They open at Tuesday mornings, 11, or I'm sorry, 1230 in the morning. So if you are a a night person, a night owl, shall we say, they're there for you. They close on Tuesdays at 3 a.m., except for 4th of July week when they will open um, or when they will close on a Wednesday at 3 a.m. You have two attempts available for each of your weekly assignments. So if you do one and, oh, mercy, it looks awful, um, you have a second one that you can try after you've done a little more studying. They are timed, but it's not time limited. It just lets you know how long it took you to get through the whole thing to um, encourage you to pick up your pace by the time you get to the weekly quizzes. And they are graded based on completion only, um, the fact that you complete one attempt. It's not on how many you get right or wrong because the goal for these weekly assignments is learning. And I'll talk about that more when I talk through the, st the study guide, okay? Um, so just know you have two attempts available, they're timed, and they're graded just on completion. 
The purpose is to show you the areas that you need to focus to study on before you take those weekly quizzes because the weekly quizzes, they will open on Fridays at 1230 in the morning. They close on Tuesdays at 3 a.m. except for 4th of July week when they'll open on a on Thursday and they'll close on Wednesday to give you some extra time there in case you're going to be out of town. One attempt is available, so you only get one shot at it. It is time limited, so you're going to have to move quickly and it's graded based on correct answers only. Um, and this is your chance to demonstrate proficiency with what you learned that week or in that specific chapter, I should say. So those are the differences between assignments and quizzes. So let's take a look. Week one, before you start class, make sure you've reviewed chapters one, two, three, and four, and it lists here what the chapters contain. You're going to have an online discussion that involves class introductions, and it's worth 20 points. You'll need to do your video review of the syllabus. It's not graded, but it is required that you complete that. The video review of the chapter study guide, which I'll do in a video after this one, um, so that's available to you. And that, again, is not graded, but it is required. And then you'll have an online discussion, history of medical terminology, and that is worth 20 points. Then you will have two weekly assignments, each worth 30 points, and two weekly quizzes. One is worth 39 points, and one is worth 56 points. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, I also do tell you what unit objectives we're going to be focusing on that week so that you can take a look at those. Every week is the course objectives, but um, the program learning outcome, what we want you to get out of the unit learning objectives, that does vary based on what we're covering. So week two, that was week one, June 16th through the 22nd. Week two, we are going to tackle chapters 5, 6, 19, and 20. <clears throat> you will have two discussions. You will have two weekly assignments. You will have one additional assignment on radiology, and you will only have one weekly quiz, and that quiz will only be on the digestive system. So you won't have to worry about being quizzed on oncology or radiology and nuclear med. But you still need to know it, and that's why you'll have the weekly assignment. Week three, this is 4th of July week, and so I tried to keep things very light for you. You just have two chapters, 10 and 22, Nervous System and Psychiatry. You have a discussion. It is worth a lot of points. The rubric is for 40. Everyone will have 100 who attempts it. So if you attempt it, you automatically get the 100 points, um, but the 40 will come with a grade. So just keep that in mind. Um, you will have two weekly assignments, one for each chapter. So you'll have a nervous system, a, a weekly assignment, and a psychiatry one. But your weekly quiz is only going to be on the nervous system chapter. So um, just keep that in mind. Hopefully that will keep it light and you'll be able to enjoy the week and the holiday. Week four, we dive right back into things. We're going to cover chapters seven, eight, and nine, the urinary system and the male and female reproductive systems. You will have an online discussion about cultural competence, two weekly assignments, and two weekly quizzes. And you can see the point values over here. Week five, we're looking at the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. They are big systems, major systems. Um, they touch so many other parts of the body. They are so large that I wanted to just do them together. I understand that the weeks that we have four chapters or three chapters are demanding, but you'll be glad when we hit week five and you only have these two. Um, you'll have an dis online discussion to complete about family history. We're going to do an assignment on medical terminology. Um, and then we will have weekly assignments for both chapter 11 and chapter 12 and weekly quizzes for chapter 11 and chapter 12. Week six, we are on to chapters 13, 14, and 18, blood system, lymph and immune systems, and the endocrine system. We are going to have a discussion on family history. You will have three weekly assignments and three weekly quizzes. So you are going to want to know that week six, you are going to be very focused on trying to get through all this material. Week seven starts with July 28th, and we will have a discussion on childhood accidents. 
because we are studying the muscular skeletal system, the skin system, and the eye and the ear, things that are prone to accidents, shall we say. So um, you will have two um, weekly assignments, one on the muscular skeletal system and one on skin, ear, and eye. And you're going to ask me, why are chapter 16 and 17 together for weekly assignments and weekly quizzes? I don't know. Whoever designed this course put them together. So um, the first chapter or weekly assignment you'll have is around the musculoskeletal system. The second will be around skin, eye, and ear. That'll be all together. Then we get to our final week. Yay! August 4th. Um, I'm considering that our final week. I know that we have a few days the week of um, the week following, but um, for the sake of the calendar, I'm really considering this to be our last week. We will have an online discussion about looking back, and I am looking forward to your feedback about that and how it went, what you think, what could be better, what you liked. It'll be, it'll be neat to hear, hear that after we've gone through all this. You have a comprehensive review assignment to prepare you for the final exam. And again, those are things that were built into this course. They are not mine, um, but they are there. This final group project is going to be what I hope, creative, fun, a great way to apply what you've learned. Um, it's called Medical Terminology Storytelling. It is not due until August 13th, the last day of class. And um, you'll have 200 points for how you work with your group. And I'll be talking more about that as we get closer. And then the rubric um, is very specific about the 70 points and how you get there. And then there's the extra credit assignment. And the extra credit can be completed at any time. I just simply posted it here because it's due, um, I believe, on the 13th as well. So that is our course calendar. And this is the syllabus. If you have any questions, any concerns, um, not sure about something, disagree with something, reach out, let me know, shoot me an email, and um, we can go over it. Hopefully it is concise. Hopefully it has very clear expectations for both of us of what I'm going to do, what you're going to do, and how we're going to get through this together. I look forward to teaching you and to learning from you. And I hope that you are excited about this opportunity too. So I'm going to let you go now, and I will be back in another video shortly. Take care.